Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're not really gonna be hanging out with Atlas too much, but we're gonna clean up Loki's enclosure and figure out a bit of a new diet for him as well. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck in and have a look at that. As you can see, there's the big bugger himself, Mr. Loki. He's a decent sized lizard, that's for sure. So I'm gonna go through and give his enclosure a bit of a spruce up, clean up a bit of his waste and stuff that he's thrown around the joint. And it is definitely due for a big water change because he just always makes this thing look like a swamp. He's a bit gross like that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go through and do that. I also need to put another mercury vapor bulb in there as well. So he's got one that he's sitting under at the moment. Um, <laughs> man, I already fed you this morning. You had eggs for brekkie. Jeez, he's a fussy lizard. Um, yeah, so we're gonna put another mercury vapor bulb down underneath the other one, just so he's got double the spread for, for some UVB. Um, Jerry from Get Your Pet Right supplied me with some awesome splash proof globes. We'll have a quick look at those later. And uh, yeah gonna clean this all up for him make it look nice and fresh and then after that I'm gonna look at making him a whole bunch of snack packs essentially that I can just defrost every time I go to feed him so I'll do that afterwards because I don't want to smell delicious right now because uh, as you can see he's a little bit food responsive which is pretty typical for this animal and gone are the days of him being shy and not wanting to eat in front of me now he doesn't care at all he just wants to eat everything sometimes including my fingers so all right let's let's crack on and change this water for you hey So the cheeky bugger is so food responsive at the moment. So he was uh, kept kind of staunching up at me and making sorts of bluffs and stuff like that. So anyway, eventually he kind of convinced himself to go down in his hide down the other end of the enclosure, which I sometimes do anyway with him. And I just managed to put his water bowl there. Uh, not that we really use it for water. We usually tend to use it a bit more for food or occasionally if I need to top up the fresh water or something like that. But yeah, that'll just kind of keep him calm and in there. Now I'm kind of free to clean the rest of this out. It's not looking too bad now. I'll just kind of F10 down all these shelves and stuff like that and just try to kill any germs that this dirty little bugger leaves up here. And it'll give me a free shot to, to change over those UV globes as well. So I might just go turn those off now too, just let them to cool down before you whack the new globe in there. Can't keep up with all the bullshit that's throwing your So Loki's tank's nice and clean, it's just filling up with water now. I've gone through and quickly give his glass a bit of a quick clean down just because that was looking a little grubby too. And uh, seeing as he's nice and contained down in his hide box down there, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just kind of show you guys a new product that's out in the market. So this is Get Your Pet Right's uh, Super Sun Light and it's a splash proof mercury vapor globe. So this is really cool, especially for things like turtles and other aquatic animals that potentially are gonna splash around water on their lights. Loki every now and then he does bust his lights pretty good just because he gets wet and he goes and flicks water and stuff all over him. So every now and then I am changing out the lights. So hopefully these will be the go going forward. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can actually keep a bit more UVB on him as well. Down the line I might try out one of Jerry's T5s as well down through the top of it here 
just for a bit of more ambient UVB light, but this is really good, so at least it gives him something he can sit up under at least a few times a day and bask and warm up, and just gives him another option there too. So generally, I have only just been using mercury vapor globes underneath there, and occasionally what I'll do is I'll run one mercury vapor and then like another heat globe or something. It's quite an interesting experiment to do that too, because quite often he'll sit right underneath the one that's actually the mercury vapor bulb, so I think you can physically tell which one's putting out the UVB rays as well. So anyway, Got a couple of these, gonna chuck them in and just make sure that he's got some good UV going forward. And uh, yeah, we'll get ready to hopefully let the little bugger loose and then go and sort out some food for him. So let's let this old dinosaur out, hey? So we'll let him come out at his own pace. Well, there you go, there's a bit of a quick look over Loki's enclosure. We've got those two nice, get your pet right, splash proof mercury vapor bulbs in there now. So we'll be getting tons of UV. I did just put that kind of bit of slate tile down over that one side. As you can see on the right hand side, the, the timber's actually getting a little bit worked over. Um, oh, it's an earthworm up there. That's a little bit bizarre. I must've dug it out when I dug out the slate tile. Sorry, buddy. Um, yeah, so anyway, I've just put that over that one that side because that's 100 watt under that side and underneath the right hand side's an 80 watt. And that little tile might just keep a little bit of residual heat going for him as well in there. You can see that the water's so much clearer. It almost looks blue, it's that clear. There's still a little bit of debris in there, which is pretty typical, but all in all, it's uh, it's not looking too bad considering the amount of water that just got changed over. As far as the enclosure dimensions go, because I know somebody's gonna ask me down in the comments, so I may as well just hit it up now. So his enclosure is two meters long, and then it is 900 mil front to back, and then 1.2 meters high. Actually, sorry, I'll take that back. It's 2.1 meters long, I'm pretty sure, from memory. I'll have to throw a tape over it again. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty decent sized box. I think down the line, you know, if I manage to get a whole bunch of space or we move into a house or something like that, I'd love to give him something way bigger. And even possibly if I was to move into a house, I'd probably look at doing something that's indoor and outdoor. So then he's at least got the option to actually get some natural UV rays and stuff along those lines as well, which would be really cool. Anyway, let's go and prepare him some food. I've also started the next enclosure build too with the same method that Cam uses in his videos. It's pretty much just been roughed in now, but this is another little awesome enclosure. And this one's gonna be for my brown tree snake. So for Loki's snack packs, I'm gonna use a few ingredients, including freshwater bassa fillet, some scallops, and also some raw tiger prawns. I'm also gonna add some rats into the mix as well. So it cost me about roughly $30 for the fish and the seafood. And then once I add the rats in on top of that, it'll probably cost me about $50. In saying that, this is about two months worth of food for him. Um, so it's gonna last a little while. I did take the heads off the prawns just because I was a little bit worried about the spike on the actual head itself. You know, he has eaten fresh yabbies in the past without any dramas, but just that spike worries me a bit. All the rest of the shell and the legs I tried to keep intact just so he's getting a lot of that calcium and that crunch from the actual prawn itself. Once I had taken all the heads off the prawns, I actually soaked the rest of them all in water just to kind of draw any salts or anything out of them. And I probably did this for about half an hour, 40 minutes or thereabouts. With the bassa fillet, I did just slice it up into little easy mouthfuls essentially just to make his life a little easier. Believe it or not, he could eat one of those whole fillets without even flinching. I have seen him do it in the past, but you know, it just makes it a little bit easier for him to get it down and less trouble. I did also discover that I probably need to sharpen his knife as well. It was a little blunt to be using even on this soft fish. So 
So Loki's always enjoyed scallops as well, and I kind of figure they, they'd be hunting around for mussels and all sorts in the mangroves where these guys are found. So, you know, they'd be eating a lot of these more salty foods and things. So I just figured that I would probably just add this into the mix just for a little bit of something different. And to be honest, even in all these snack packs, he's probably just getting one scallop per snack pack. So now just comes the simple task of actually just packing it all up into these snap lock bags just for easy access and easy defrosting. And most of it, you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. A couple of little bits of fish, one or two prawns and a little handful of scallops. And then after this, I'll go and add the rats to it as well. Like a lot of people, I was kind of getting stuck just going, oh, you know what, it's just easy for me to defrost a few rats for you. And I just figured that Loki wasn't probably getting the variety in his diet that he needed, or it was a little bit irregular. Well, Loki's certainly taken a good liking to these UV lights straight away. He's right up under them. Absolutely cooking himself too. He's such a gorgeous animal. I absolutely love this lizard. And it's about time we actually gave him some tucker and let him tuck into one of these snack packs that I've made up for him. So there's a little closer look at what these snack packs just look like. There's a couple of bits of bass fillet in there. Well, there's a bit of scallop, tiger prawn or two and a little wrap so it's a bit of a varied way for me to just kind of pull out a pack give him something that he's going to love and also give him a bit of variety in the same hit rather than getting stuck in the trap of just doing too many rodents or too many fish fillets or something like that he's getting a bit of everything you know the shell and the prawn is going to be really good for a bit of calcium and things for him he's going to get that of course from the rat as well with a bit of the bone content and then of course he's getting a bit of that natural kind of fish and stuff that he'd be kind of scavenging on around the mangroves up in the top end so yeah, a little bit of an easy way to vary his diet a bit. So we're going to see how Loki reacts to this. Hopefully it'll be easy enough to get it on film because it's a little bit tight in here and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to get a good shot of this enclosure. So usually he responds to two things really well and he gets a bit of food responsive over both. And the first one is if I was to unlock the lock, he gets kind of excited because he knows that I'm going to open up the enclosure and hopefully food's coming. And the second thing which you might just be able to see in the shot here are these pink tongs. So usually for him, those pink tongs means he's definitely getting fed. Um, but sometimes, and it's, it's my own fault, if I'm opening up this enclosure, sometimes he associates that with food now too. So I need to get back in the habit of uh, opening up the enclosure more and not giving him food at the same time. Because if I get a little bit lazy and I just chuck rats or something in there, then he obviously just associates that with food. Whereas I want him to get back into the habit of pink tongs equal food. So I'll see how he reacts. So far, so good, he didn't react to that. Now. Just put a big handprint straight on my good hard work there. Right. This is why it's hard keeping the glass clean in his enclosure. Because <laughs> he's got this big big water pit in here and uh, well that looks beautiful for five minutes and I'm glad you guys did see the fact that I do clean this glass from time to time but uh, yeah my big pig over here there's a bit of prawn for you mate where'd you end up I'll see if I can bring you guys in a little closer Hear that awesome crunching there too. Get a fish. Ooh. Yeah, he's not going to say no to that. Bit more fish. Good boy. And get a prawn. <laughs> and last but not least, we'll give him a bit of this scallop with the row. There you are. Now that is you done for a few days, Mister. I swear you eat better than I do. Yep. Well, that glass was clean. <laughs> you're such a menace. But geez, you're a gorgeous lizard and you're worth every bit of it. What a feed, hey? All your Christmases came at once. Man, I love this lizard. Those little yellow specks all through him. He's almost like a diamond python, but in rounded form. It's quite, quite cool. But yeah, yeah, as you can see, he's a big chunky animal. These guys are a stocky goanna by nature, so 
doing this, you know, I usually only feed him twice a week anyway. So at least when I feed him, he's going to get a bit of a variety. And coming into winter, I'm going to starve him a bit this winter too because he doesn't need all that food. So we'll see how we go. But yeah, hopefully he has a good brew motion this year. But he looks rather full after that. I'm not going to lie, I did give him a bit of scrambled eggs this morning too. So he's had a good day. But I dare say he's going to have about four or five days without food now. So hopefully that'll get you through a bit, mate. Well, there you have it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe on the video. And thanks for checking out my main man, Loki, here. He's just going for a swim. Lucky him. I think I might do the same, to be quite frank, because it's a bit of a warmer day here in Sydney. So, without any further ado, I'll catch you guys all on the next video. Cheers. Cheers.